Good evening, everyone. We will give everyone just a moment to get settled and then we'll get started with our event tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Hudson Library tonight for our virtual author program with nutritionist and health writer, Daniela Chase. She's joining us tonight for a conversation about her new book, Home Detox, Make Your Home a Healthier Place for Everyone Who Lives There. Um, in, in addition to tonight's program, our virtual event, the Hudson Library, we have a lot of upcoming programs, both virtual, and we're excited to have some in-person programs back at the library. So I would encourage you to check out the library's website at hudsonlibrary.org to take a look at all of our upcoming programs for all ages here at the library. Allow me to introduce our author this evening. Daniela Chase is a nationally recognized clinical practitioner, author, and educator. She's a leader in the field of medical nutrition therapy, has written books, columns, and patient care materials and appeared on radio and television. She's also the creator and host of Nutrition Matters, a health science program covering hot topics in toxicology, medicine, and nutrition that is aired on NPN, NPR stations nationwide. And we have copies of Home Detox are available for purchase courtesy of the Learned Owl. And we'll have a link in the chat here in just a moment if you'd like to purchase your copy this evening. Well, Daniela, thank you so much for your time tonight. I think um, a lot of times when we think about our health, we think about nutrition and activity level, but we don't always think about what we're bringing into our homes that may be affecting our health. So thank you so much for just writing this book and bringing awareness to some of the things that I think a lot of us maybe are completely unaware of. I mean, I was, I was a little bit, it was kind of eye-opening to read through your book and just see all the things in our house that are affecting us that we probably don't even know about at this point. Yeah, so thank absolutely. you for, yeah, thank you for writing this book and bringing awareness to this extremely important discussion tonight. So thanks for joining Aww. us. Thank you. Um, so this is an exciting evening for me because the book just came out yesterday. So um, you probably maybe showed this on the screen, but um, it's in libraries now. So that's really exciting because we've had a promotion going for a whole month, but it wasn't available. So here it is finally. And um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background. So I started out as a nutritionist. It was at Bastyr University back in the late 80s, and it was the very first fully accredited natural health sciences college in the country. And uh, I was just so excited about helping people um, heal from disease from day one. That's really where my focus was. So in those early days, I started working with cancer patients. In fact, while I was still in school, one of my professors and I started writing books together and we did a whole series on how to eat if you have diabetes, heart disease and cancer. And um, it was really exciting because we got to work with a lot of patients through the clinic at the school and see people doing better and um, really recovering more quickly from cancer using our nutrition protocols. But uh, right out of school, I started working with the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, developing their nutrition protocols. So I was able to track cancer patients over a long period of time to see how they really did. And the nutrition was wonderful. It really helped people feel better and recover quicker. But over uh, the following decade, then I started to see that a lot of folks were actually having a reoccurrence. They were, their cancer was coming back. So... I have a very curious mind and I wanted to know why, where did this come from? Why are they getting cancer? And so I started really diving into the research about um, you know, specific toxins, thinking that most of these would probably be industrial, like something outside in our environment, um, you know, air pollution and uh, heavy metals maybe in our water, something like that. But over the decades, what I've really learned is that um, most of our exposures are right inside our homes. In fact, the, um, the EPA now, right on their website, uh, says that our exposure to toxins is two to five times higher inside our homes than outside our homes. And this is because of consumer products inside our homes, mainly. Um, 
But it's also kind of compounded in the last few years because of COVID and because we're spending so much time inside, it uh, increases the, the time that we're around the objects that are uh, you know, releasing these toxins and giving us exposures. Uh, so when I'm talking about toxins, I just wanted to give you kind of a sense of what I mean, and we'll get into it here as I kind of show you a little bit more about the book. But uh, what we're talking about is things like phthalates from plastics and heavy metals like lead and mercury and um, chemicals that are in consumer products that release uh, solvents and fragrances that are called VOCs, a volatile organic compounds which doesn't sound very scary, but really they can have a, a really significant impact on our health. So I'll explain that a bit more too. Um, so uh, what we're talking about here is objects in our homes that are releasing toxins and creating an exposure for us. And the way that these toxins affect us is in very specific ways. Uh, they can damage DNA. They can cause epigenetic effects that can last for generations. Um, they can affect our mitochondria and how we produce energy. Um, and many of them, a surprising number, are endocrine disruptors. So they can affect our hormones, mainly because they mimic hormones. Um, some of these things like heavy metals and plastics act as estrogens in our bodies. So it's a whole new world of science, really, because we have um, we have all this information now about genetics and epigenetics at the same time that we are getting all this uh, incredible research on toxicology. So we have this kind of zeitgeist where we can take control of our own home environments and uh, really help our help everyone in the home improve their health by removing these things that are undermining us. Uh, so one thing I want to just explain before I dive in, because I think um, hearing about toxins can be kind of alarming when you're just first hearing about it. So I just want to assure everyone that this is actually kind of a golden ticket for us in terms of health. I mean, we have we have so many epidemics in this country and uh, our healthcare system is really quite broken and so many people suffering. And this is such an easy thing that we actually have control over you know, we have control over our own home environments. And I kind of think of this as health by subtraction, because you don't have to buy anything expensive to get better. All you have to do is identify toxic things in your home and get them out. So um, I feel like this is really positive, exciting information. And I hope everyone kind of keeps that in mind as we go further into this. So um, Let's see. So I did put together a slideshow and maybe we could pop over to that now and I'll uh, be able to take everyone kind of through the book that way. Does that sound good? Okay. Does that look good? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Do I need to close anything? Are we okay? No, you should be fine. Okay. So, um, so as we start here, um, so this is fun. The, um, when I first wrote the book, um, it was really called a home, uh, a room by room guide to identifying toxins in your home. But in every chapter I talk about, uh, babies and how they have a disproportionate exposure to toxins in the home and how our pets have exposure. I mean, they're just tremendously affected by things we use in the yard and by toxins inside our houses. So my uh, editor changed the subtitle to make your home a healthier place for everyone who lives there, which I just love because that's what it's really all about. Um, let's see. It's not jumping. Uh oh, my navigation isn't working. Hmm. Let's see. Did you hit play when we were just the play button? Maybe I can do it this way. I could do it that way. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, another kind of broad concept here is that we're really talking about trying to reduce the synthetic uh, materials in our homes and increase natural materials. Um, so 
let's see, just to kind of explain what I mean here. Um, so natural materials are things that are biodegradable, um, things that are like in the picture here, you can see some wood and that's a little walnut um, fiber scrub brush and a gourd scrub um, sponge there standing up. So What's happened is since the 1950s, since plastic was really starting to be introduced in the US and around the world, we've just had more and more products that are being created with more and more chemicals. And there's something like 40,000 chemicals that are used commonly in household products now. And that's in actual products. And then we also have our um, kind of cleaning solutions. So when we bring things like um, anti-static spray and uh, stain removers into our homes, we're bringing a whole nother group of chemicals in. And so um, really tr trying to think through things in each of your rooms and um, look for synthetics and start to remove them or replace them as needed. And a lot of things we really just don't need, like we really don't need to be using dryer sheets or bath bombs. Uh, but some items like a scrub brush in your in your kitchen or a sponge, for example, of course, we need an alternative to that. And um, the first two years that I was working on this book, it was all about looking at the research. And the last year was all about trying to find alternatives that are accessible and not too expensive um, and are truly eco, like really biodegradable that don't have any plastics in them. For example, like uh, toothbrushes, it, it took me months to find a toothbrush that not only had a natural handle, but the bristles were actually natural too. So um, that's a lot of what I've done in the book has tried to help people find practical ways to really make uh, those changes. So here, this is um, just a little image of brushes again. And I really think this is an important piece um, is to learn how to clean our homes naturally uh, and using as many natural materials as we can, because uh, plastics, like plastic sponges in our kitchens, they don't dry well and they stay wet and they really harbor a lot of organisms, so a lot of um, bacteria and fungus. And when studies have been done across the country looking at the uh, organisms that are in sponges in our kitchens, they found so many that actually cause disease and one that was incredibly common and it was the organism that causes pink eye. It was in almost all of the plastic sponge samples. So when you're using natural materials like um, the plant fiber sponges and brushes, they have their own kind of natural antibacterials and they dry really well and they don't harbor those kinds of organisms. And then this is another part of the book. I, um, I created some really super simple recipes for making your own cleaning products just so you can completely avoid those plastic bottles at the store and all those um, those chemicals uh, in cleaning products themselves. And you can pretty much make everything you need with just a few things. I use Dr. Bronner's sal suds and uh, tea tree oil, but most essential oils have antimicrobial properties. So they kill bacteria and viruses. But this is kind of the basic recipe that you can use to um, just make it in a spray bottle and use it for cleaning around the house. And when you need something that has a little abrasion, you just add a little baking soda to that. And there's a formula in the book for that. And then uh, I have a, a little kitchen image here. Um, oh, you can't see it all um, there. Maybe that's better. Um, so throughout the book, each of the chapters starts with a picture like this, showing you the toxic 10 and kind of giving you a sense of where those, um, those top 10 toxins are in each room. And uh, the kitchen is a really important place to start. You can make such a huge difference in your whole family's health by just removing a few things from your kitchen like plastics. So things like uh, plastic cutting boards, you know, when you're using a knife with those every day and they get those little cut lines in them, that's plastic material that's being released into your food and you're ingesting those phthalates. So um really just identifying plastics like Tupperware and plastic cups and switching those out for glass, switching your uh, cutting boards to something like pressed paper or bamboo or wood, um, you can drastically reduce the exposures just simply that way. And there's more to talk about in the kitchen. And so if you have specific questions when we do the Q&A, you can let me know. 
Uh, but one more thing here I do want to mention is about um, P PFOS, which is the chemicals in uh, nonstick cookware like Teflon. So um, Teflon and other brands of these PFOS um, are extremely toxic and you know, they've been part of our cookware for many years now, but we finally have really great alternatives. And um, it's very important that we avoid this one. Uh, they really shouldn't be using it in products at all. And it is getting phased out in many ways, but it's still out there. So we have to really be careful ourselves to identify that and, and remove those um, Teflon products from our homes. Um, so Teflon is um, really hard on the kidneys and when you heat a pan that's Teflon and you heat it too hot, so you're actually getting a little smoke, uh, that's releasing the vapors that go right into our lungs. And uh, it can cause something called Teflon flu and it causes extreme inflammation in the lungs. Um, and of course, if you have a Teflon pan that is kind of chipped up in the bottom, like from using a you know metal utensil, you're uh, releasing big chunks of that Teflon material. And it's really hard on the kidneys, in fact, um, we have so many kidney toxins in our homes that one out of seven people in the U.S. now has uh, kidney disease. So um, all of these things that I'm talking about, they are reversible. So as soon as you remove that source, your body has many different systems in place to detoxify and clear these things out. So really all you need to do is stop the exposures and your body will start healing right away. In fact, a lot of people will have an experience in the first few weeks of um, detoxing their home where either their headaches go away, their asthma feels better, um, they're kind of wheezing in their chest feels better, and there are toxins that affect uh, diabetes, heart disease, cancer. There's numerous carcinogens in our homes, and Teflon is one of those. And so is plastic, and actually maybe I'll mention that right now, that uh, the phthalates and plastics mimic estrogen. And for those with, uh, for example, uh, hormone sensitive breast cancer, it is fuel on the fire to make those little cells grow. But uh, the good news is that when you have estrogen receptor positive breast cancer and you remove those triggers, you can see your, your um, healing in your lab work. I've been watching this for 30 years now with my clients watching their uh, breast cancer markers drop. Those are the uh, labs tests that show us um, how developed the cancer is. And we can actually see that drop. So it's really exciting as you identify these things that undermine our health and remove them from your home, how quickly you may start feeling better or see that actually in your labs. Um, and then this is just a, a little reminder. Oh gosh, I'm sorry. This is my first slideshow. I'm, not doing very well. Um, oh gosh, this is, um, let's see if I can take this off. Um, so food storage containers. Uh, so this is a really important, um, this is a really important thing to pay attention to in your home because when food, especially hot food or acidic food is touching plastics, it will leach phthalates out and then you're ingesting those chemicals. So switching to um, glass or silicone or wax cloth, like, um, like bees wrap, which is just like a cotton cloth with a little beeswax on it that you can wrap your sandwiches in and uh, store avocados and things like that in. These are all non-toxic uh, materials that you can use instead of um, plastic food storage containers. And um, this is just a little image of a um, canning jar, but you can just save jars that come into your home, like um, peanut butter jars and jelly jars, things like that. Just, um, you know, wash them out and run them through the dishwasher and use those for food storage. Okay. Um, and then this is another example of um, food storage containers. And what I love here is that uh, you can kind of see there's wood lids on these and then the little rubber ring is actually silicone and this is kind of one of our new materials that uh, you're starting to see in a lot of the kitchen stores that is completely inert meaning it's non-toxic it doesn't release anything to, into our food um, and it's something that can be used to replace rubber and plastic for a lot of uh, different items in our homes but specifically in the kitchen and it's just made from minerals so it's completely healthy and and non-toxic and then here i wanted you to just see this um, how many of these uh items oh gosh 
let me jump down here, uh, how many of the uh, chemicals from specific things like carpeting and dryer sheets and so on, how many of them are kidney toxins specifically? And the reason that is, is because these uh, long chemical chains, as we absorb them either by breathing them or if we're you know, using nail polish remover on our skin, they get absorbed right into our bloodstream. And then um, these are all processed through our urinary tract. So all of these chemicals have to go through the liver and then through the kidneys. And so these chemicals can be really hard on our poor kidneys. So the more we can um, avoid these specific things, hopefully this is visible for everyone to see. Um, can you can you increase the size just a little bit? Uh, yeah, it's, let's see. This is in the book, right? It is. Oh, yeah. All yeah. these slides I made from images in the book. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not very good with this. Uh, there. Is that visible? That's better. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so uh, there are many charts like this in the book. I'm kind of doing a quick, simple overview, but I really tried to make a comprehensive list throughout the book so those who have specific health conditions can easily just hone in and target on those things that they really need to avoid. Uh, but it is really kind of amazing to think about uh, how many different chemicals we're exposed to in various places in our homes. And then I wanted to talk just briefly about um, daily habits because this is where we can really make the biggest impact on our health is changing those things that we do every day. Um, so for example, um, you know, switching from regular coffee to organic coffee will reduce your exposure to organic um, agricultural chemicals and um, switching from uh, toxic tools for making coffee. Uh, so avoiding aluminum tea kettles, for example, or um, switching from those plastic mesh bags that are used now for tea, uh, just to little paper bags, or um, this is just a little brass um, tea strainer here in this image. So just kind of thinking through the daily habits is a, a really great way to have a, um, a really quick impact on your health by reducing those daily exposures. And then, um, kind of jumping back to Teflon for a second, uh, some of the really nice alternatives are cast iron and you can buy almost any size that you need. And they even have thin lightweight cast iron pans now. And even though there are some expensive brands, there's some really nice inexpensive cast iron. And I almost see them at garage sales and things. And um, all you have to do is uh, season them. You know, you put the oil on them to season them so that uh, they're nonstick and they work great. Uh, completely non-toxic. Stainless steel is another one that's completely non-toxic, and uh, there's a lot of brands that are pretty affordable. And then copper pans, and in terms of non-stick, I really like green pan. It's just a non-toxic ceramic coated pan. So there's lots of great alternatives and uh, many inexpensive ones too. And then as you're moving around the house and kind of thinking about those um, replacement items, um, finding things that are biodegradable is um, really important. You know, our our whole um, our whole system for managing our garbage and our uh, landfills are just full of plastic, and our ocean is just overwhelmed with plastic. So um, we can make a huge difference just in our own homes. You know, there's billions of us who are throwing away plastic toothbrushes every month, and plastic razors, and uh, plastic clothing like fleece, and so just switching to biodegradable, like natural clothing materials like linen and cotton and hemp and um, switching to natural wood hairbrush and toothbrush and comb. And all these beautiful items are very um, accessible now. There's a lot of places online and even Amazon is starting to carry some of these things. So it's a really great time to be able to access these things. Um, and actually, let's talk about clothing just for a quick second, because I mentioned the fleece. Uh, so it's just amazing how much of our clothing is plastic. So um, like anything that's stretchy, like workout clothes, those are generally plastic. Uh, and a lot of camping gear is made out of plastic, like raincoats and, um, and boots. And they're not only made out of the plastic, and they also have Teflon coatings on them to make them waterproof. And 
when we have clothing that's made out of plastic and as we wash those items, um, all that lint that catches in the dryer uh, screen, you can see all those particles. That's all um, microplastics and nanoplastics that could end up in our water system. Um, and then we end up drinking it later as our whole water system circulates. So um, there's a lot of reasons that we need to get away from this. And again, even with the camping clothes and the sporting clothes, there are alternatives now, like really great ones. Uh, canvas jackets that have wax coating to make them waterproof and um, exercise pants that are completely hemp. So it's not easy to find the clothing. I did spend a lot of time looking for that, but it is possible. And I have tracked down a, a few um, specific places where you can find these things. So if anyone's interested, I can post that on social media for you. Um, so let's see. Yeah, there's so much to talk about there, but in Q&A, if you guys want to hear more, I'd love to talk about that more. Um, and then our bathrooms. Our bathrooms are another place, just like the kitchen, where we really need to think about what we're putting on our bodies. So everything that goes on our skin gets absorbed right into our bloodstream, and um, it's just like eating it. It has the same exposure level as eating that product. So if you think about when you're buying a lotion, make sure it has all natural ingredients like essential oils or jojoba oil or things that you would feel okay about ingesting because it, these uh, materials do end up in our bloodstream. Um, and then um, just thinking about routines and habits, um, if you are starting to kind of switch over to making your own products at home, um, it doesn't have to be hard. It's something like you could just choose an hour on Sundays to kind of restock, um, make your toothpaste or make your cleaning supplies or make sure you have plenty on hand. Or if you're using rags instead of paper towels, just make sure those are washed and folded up in the drawer and ready to go. And it's amazing how at first that can feel kind of intimidating, like, how do I make this? But once you start, it's so easy. It just becomes so simple. And then you'll think, why was I ever spending all that money on all those products? So um, again, if anyone has questions about making things, let me know, because I'd love to help you make that an easy transition. Um, and then here, let's see, this is just talking about the bedroom. Um, so the reason that our bedroom is uh, such a significant source of exposure is that we spend a lot of time in there. And um, so we really need to think about our beds, what we're sleeping on. And uh, memory foam has become awfully popular and it's so toxic. It's, um, it's made out of plastic and then it has numerous chemicals embedded into it. So when you're sleeping on that and you have your face down on your memory foam and you're breathing that through the night, you're having a really significant exposure to those chemicals. And it's so toxic that it is now considered the number one cause of um, SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. So mattresses, baby mattresses that are made out of um, these chemicals. Um, We'll talk about kids' rooms here in a second, but switching away from memory foam is really critical. And there are many uh, bedding companies that make natural uh, rubber mattresses. And it's fascinating to me where this material comes from. So instead of uh, you know a big chemical solution that's pushed into a mold, all it is is natural rubber that is collected from rubber trees. Uh, just the way that like sap um, from maple is collected uh, to make maple syrup. They actually collect this completely raw natural material and it's just baked into these slabs to make um, this lovely mattresses. Um, so if you were going to invest in something in your home um, to make a big difference, switching the mattress is really important. Uh, but one thing you can do if you can't afford a new mattress right away is just get a nice cotton cover and uh, it, to encase your current mattress to kind of help create a barrier to protect yourself um, while you're sleeping. Um, all right, so let's see. And um, as far as bedding goes, um, any of the fabrics that we have in our house that are synthetic, like we talked about the fleece, 
Um, so polyester um, bedding is all plastic and polyester and other plastics actually absorb toxins and hold on to them um, and they shed uh, phthalates. So as they get older and the more you wash them, the more little uh, nanoplastics and, um, and microplastics that are in the air in your room and the more exposure you have. So uh, switching bedding to cotton, uh, linen, hemp, uh, any natural materials that would be compostable are a really great idea. And then in our um, in our common areas, like a living room, um, there's a few things that uh, I think are kind of big sweeping things that we can do to help protect ourselves. And one of those is just simply removing dust. So just recently, I was working on an article um, about house dust, and I learned a few new things that just were so amazing to me. Um, you know, not too long ago when uh, dust samples were tested, they were really mainly detritus from those living in the house. So it was things like um, skin cells and hair and cat fur. So just kind of natural stuff. But now our house does is primarily little particles from um, objects in our house. So it's little pieces of microplastic from our bedding or from our fleece clothing. Um, uh, little particles, even from like toys and um, and those plastics and the particles of heavy metals and all of the things in our homes, um, they act like a sponge. Once they're like little dust bunnies rolling around, they act like a sponge for other chemicals. So as you use toxic cleaning products, it absorbs into them. And then the big kicker is that dust gets kicked around in our houses and um, We've done nationwide studies now to learn this. So it's this is about the average home in the US. There's so much dust that we breathe in and then ingest about two tablespoons of dust a day. So that's one of our most significant um, kind of vectors or um, one of the ways that we're exposed to all of these things. So simply by cleaning up the dust, we can make a huge difference in our home. So vacuuming really well with something with a HEPA filter, just using some damp rags to wipe down surfaces, um, just really trying to kind of track down the dust bunnies and get those cleaned up. It will make a huge difference for the humans in the house, but a really big difference too for those on the floor, so toddlers and pets. And then uh, there's a whole chapter in the book about um, kind of the things that we're exposed to in terms of like our workspaces and EMFs or electromagnetic fields is one of those areas that's just now being really well studied. And we're learning that uh, that electromagnetic fields like our computers, when we're really close to them, uh, they're pretty high level radiation or EMFs. And as we get back, they are dramatically reduced. So there's ways to work with our electronics and not have such a high exposure, like you working with uh, a desktop computer where you can sit two feet back rather than a laptop where you have to be up close. So there are easy ways to deal with that. And one of those sweeping motions you can do to kind of protect yourself from EMFs is simply turning your modem off at night. So once you do that, you've, um, you've dropped those EMFs throughout the entire house for those eight or nine hours that you're sleeping. Um, so that's just one kind of quick uh, habit that you could get into just turning off the the uh, modem in the evening. Um, and then I wanted to mention those, um, those PFAS chemicals. Again, those are the chemicals that are in Teflon pans, but they're really used widely in consumer products now that's used on carpeting to make it stain resistant. It's used on sheets. It's used in camping gear. Um, so being really uh, aware about that, that whole group of chemicals and just making sure that you don't bring that into your home. So you know, when you're buying a new sofa, if they say, do you want stain resistant um, spray on it? We'll treat it for you. Ask them what that is, because it's almost always this Teflon like material that's very toxic. So you want to opt not to have that. So over time, you'll become more and more aware of what these things are. And um, after a while, you will have it all down, I promise, because, you know, it's really, um, there's a couple of dozen really common things in our homes. And once you learn what those are, you'll be highly aware and you'll you'll become uh, very discriminating about what you allow in. 
Um, then I wanted to talk about houseplants. Um, they're just amazing purifiers. So you can certainly buy like an electronic purifier for your home, like a Dyson, and they do work really well um, to suck up formaldehyde and um, even pull out a lot of dust into the filters. And uh, some of the, the specific air purifiers will pull certain chemicals out even better. Um, they actually have like a little electronic screen that shows you what your formaldehyde level is and how well it's cleaning that up. But when um, NASA did studies on houseplants, they found that um, almost all houseplants will filter a certain amount of chemicals out and some were better than others. And there's a whole um, list in the book about which houseplants are really effective at cleaning our air. And then um, this is just a little reminder, that's a brush for cleaning your um, plant leaves because uh, as dust collects there, they're not as good at cleaning your air out. So you've got to clean those leaves off. Um, so removing dust from every place in the house is really important piece of this. And um, in terms of that NASA study, they also were, what they were originally doing is actually trying to figure out if plants could go in, um, you know, in rockets so that um, astronauts might have a natural way to clean up their air. And they found that they were really effective at cleaning up VOC. So those are volatile organic compounds, things like solvents. And this is something that we have throughout our houses, mainly from fragrance products. So one of the super toxins in our homes is um, air fresheners, which sounds counterintuitive, but air fresheners, things that you um, sprinkle on the carpet or plug into the wall, um, and even perfumes that you know we put on our skin, they all release VOCs, and um, and many of those are highly toxic, even carcinogenic compounds like um, benzene. So that's something that we really need to get away from. And I think that in most households, fragrance products are used to try to cover up a smell. And usually that smell is actually the source of the problem. So it's usually like a bacteria or pet stains or something. So targeting those and really cleaning those up to get rid of the smell is the way to go. And I do have um, information in the book about that, like um, uh, getting a black light to identify exactly where the cat spray is or the, the stains on the carpet. So you can go in and really clean those up. And then here's a little picture of the living room. And um, so just thinking about spaces where people spend a lot of time in your house, those are gonna be um, places to really target and clean up. And if you do have pets or toddlers, uh, making sure you really get the floor cleaned up um, and kind of get behind things to look for those dust bunnies. And um, and there's, there's specific information about like what types of curtains to buy and um, if you're buying furniture, how to get away from the kind of uh, pressed particle board materials that have formaldehyde and other chemicals in them. And really one of the kind of broad recommendations I could make is um, buying used furniture rather than buying new furniture. So old furniture that's solid wood, um, Older furniture is already off-gassed and released a lot of its toxins. And a lot of older furniture is really made out of solid materials that uh, don't contain a lot of the more um, kind of modern chemical um, sprays and finishes and things. So older furniture um, is generally safer. Um, and then in terms of fragrance, um, a couple of things to think about are uh, candles and incense. So Incense release a, a surprisingly high level of VOCs. Um, so it's a it's better just to you know make a little mist out of some tea tree oil or some essential oils and water and just mist that in your house than using something that burns. Um, and even though uh, it's illegal to use lead in candle wicks now, there's just a lot of products that are still out there that do contain things like paraffins, which is a petroleum product, or lead in the wick of candles. So um, and if moving away from those into natural solutions is um, safer. And then the laundry room can be um, a source of a huge number of chemicals if you have a lot of products in there. So if you're using 
fabric softeners and dryer sheets um, and bleaches and stain removers. So uh, going simpler and having fewer products and really trying to go completely natural there will make such a big difference. And dryer sheets is uh, one of the most toxic things in, um, in a lot of laundry rooms now. They're highly fragranced, a lot of solvents there. And when your clothes come out smelling like those dryer sheets, then uh, those toxic materials have attached to your clothes and then you're going to be exposed to them while you're wearing them. So really important to get away from uh, laundry room chemicals. Uh, and then um, this is just a, a little reminder on the right there in that jar is just a, a way to make some laundry soap. Um, so there are some really simple um, formulas for making laundry soap. And then the next image here is dryer balls. I hope you can see that. They're just wool balls and they're such a great replacement for dryer sheets. So that's all they are is wool, completely inert and natural. And you just throw those in the dryer and they just help like when you're drying pillows or comforter, it helps puff them up and get the air in there. So they dry faster, use less electricity. There's no chemicals used and um, they work really well too to kind of help keep too much static electricity from forming. And then children's rooms, we talked a bit about mattresses and how important that is to uh, switch over to natural materials for mattresses. All the companies that make um, uh, bed mattresses make uh, children's um, crib mattresses too. So really important that babies have that natural material and anything they're really coming in contact with like um, nipples for um, baby bottles and pacifiers. All of those are completely accessible now in terms of finding things that are made out of silicone and natural rubber. And that wasn't true even 10 years ago. So it's a really good time to be able to find all of those things now. And then one other thing to mention in the baby's room is uh, baby monitors, because many of them actually do emit a pretty high level of EMF. So um, those should be far enough away from your baby to uh, protect them from that. Um, and of course, their clothing and their bedding should be all natural. Um, so just always focusing on that with anything that you're buying. I, uh, not too long ago, there was an article in the New York Times about um, a highly toxic, um, it was a seat for babies and that it was being pulled off the off shelves. And then when I went into stores like Target, I looked for it and it was still in the stores like months after it was apparently pulled off the market they were still available so we have to kind of watch out for those things ourselves and it's just easier to just really switch over to all natural materials when it comes to kids and then in our um, home offices if you spend a lot of time in your home office like I do uh, it's an important place to really make a clean sweep like uh, clean out dust make sure that you air the area out um, you can get a little uh, EMF tester. I use one called a RAD10 and it just shows me how far away from my electronics I need to be to really protect myself from the electromagnetic fields. Um, and then there's there's things to know about like um, pens, like felt tip pens that emit high VOCs, but um, the office is one of the easier places to just do a few clean sweeps and make a big difference. Um, so small changes. So thinking about uh, as you move through your house, if you want to do something to try to make a big difference, but if you don't have a lot of time or if you're not well now and so you don't have a lot of energy, um, just dusting really well and adding house plants in can have a huge benefit. Just those few things and turning off your modem at night. And then our garages can be such a big source of uh, toxic uh, like materials and paints that emit high VOCs and solvents. And um, in the picture here, you might see the tires down there. And I don't know if you've ever noticed uh, when you go into a tire store, it smells really strong. And I went into my Les Schwab store here in Port Townsend, where I live, and I had um, a a machine that tests for um, specific compounds and left that in the store overnight and came back and got it the next day and sent it in. And it came back with like 81 carcinogens, like really off the chart chemicals. So um, just keep in mind that 
many chemicals, you'll be able to sense them, you can smell them. And so it's kind of one of those first clues, like there's something toxic over here, because I can smell it. And that'll kind of help you, you know, follow your nose. And with something like tires in your garage, uh, making sure you ventilate that area now and then is a really good idea. And this whole chapter is all about what you can switch out and, um, and use instead. So uh, let's just jump down here. So kind of switching away from plastic items. This is a metal tool kit I found online. And um, I get really excited about this, just kind of finding inert materials to keep switching out away from plastics in every way that I can. Um, and then this is something so simple. I use uh, salt to kill the weeds in my driveway. I have a huge gravel driveway. And I used to spend a lot of time just hand pulling the weeds because I will not use Roundup. You know, the herbicides are so extremely toxic to us, but they also cause tumors for animals that um, walk through our lawns and pick that up on their paws and lick them. And uh, chemicals like glyphosate, which is in Roundup, they've found now that from just a single spraying in your own yard, um, the particles of that can travel in the air up to a one and a quarter mile away. And when pregnant women are exposed, even at one and a quarter mile away, it increases the risk for autism. So all these um, choices that we make in our own home, in our own yard, um, can have rever reverberations kind of out into our community that can be really good. We can help our communities be less toxic. Um, and then if you have children and you're thinking about um, your yard, uh, there's a lot of things to consider, like hoses have phthalates and heavy metals. And so, you know, over time, as you kind of go through the process of cleaning up your house, you can start to think about these things. And maybe um, if you're using your hose to water your vegetable garden, switch to a natural hose, uh, make sure the kids don't drink out of the hose. Um, even play equipment can have a lot of um, heavy metals in uh, embedded in the wood to help protect it from the from water to help it last longer. But those chemicals then end up in the soil. So uh, just uh, kind of scrutinizing each of those things out in your yard is a really good idea, especially if you spend a lot of time there or you have kids. And um, and also talking with your neighbors. So just as spraying something in your own yard can affect your neighbors, talking to your neighbors about not using spray um, can really help protect you and your own children since that um, those kinds of sprays really do spread. And um, in this last little screen about toxins, I just wanted to talk about smoke for a minute because this one was so surprising to me. Um, so we've known for a long time about HCAs and PAHs. So this is like polyaromatic hydrocarbon. So it's the, the particles from any kind of burning material. So burning in your fireplace, a bonfire, um, smoke from a cigarette. Um, these materials can increase cancer. They're carcinogens. But what they've now discovered is that there's a specific HCA called FIPS. It's a acronym for big long chemical name, but FIPS are formed when something is burned like barbecue material or uh, burnt toast. And that black material is considered a three strike carcinogen. So it not only initiates cancer cells, so it can start cancer in your body, but it causes them to grow rapidly and to spread. So just protecting yourself from burnt material uh, can really drop your risk of developing cancer and protect you. And as we talk about all of these toxins, if you already have cancer, you already have a disease, by removing these, you remove that burden from your body and it allows your body to heal. And our bodies are miraculous at healing. So um, this is really important for all of us to be doing, to be avoiding these toxins, um, whether we're trying to reduce our risk or to heal. And then in my last little slide here, I just put my contact info because um, generally this stirs up a lot more questions. And so you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, I have my uh, website there, my email address and my Instagram. And then on Facebook, if you just go to Daniela Chase on Facebook, um, you can ask questions there and I will post answers. And uh, throughout the next few months as the book is coming out here, 
I'll be doing giveaways and um, every Friday. So uh, several of the companies that have provided uh, products to me, like uh, cell suds and um, hygienic tea tree oil, they're, they're sending products right now and I'll be doing giveaways. So I um, invite you to come on over and um, interact with me there. And I'll close the little slideshow here now. Okay. Did that work? Just that do your um, stop screen share. Thank you. There we go. We Bye. have a lot of questions and I know we won't get through all of them because it's already almost 10 till. Just one question I wanted to ask you really quick um, because you use essential oils for cleaning and also in uh, like toothpaste and other products that you're using. Does the quality of the like the, um, the quality of the oil matter? Mm -hmm. Great, great question. Um, so food grade is important and to get the best just by organic. And um, I've noticed that Clygenic, which is a company that's sending me those products, um, they're not very expensive. When I first started working on this, I was spending like $15 for a tiny bottle, but now I think they sell like four bottles for $8 or something. So you can get organic fairly inexpensive, but yes, quality okay. does matter. Well, let's go ahead over to um, the Q&A. We have lots of audience questions. Are you able to bring the Q&A up, Daniela? Oh, thanks. Let's see. Aha, here we go. <laughs> oh, okay, great questions. Okay, so is aluminum foil safe? No. <laughs> So uh, aluminum is a heavy metal and it is considered a breast carcinogen. It triggers breast cancer cell growth. In fact, when they've done biopsies on breast tumors, they found concentrated aluminum. So the way that's written up in studies is that our breast tissue has an affinity for aluminum. And uh, so instead of using um, aluminum foil, you can just you know use a pan with a lid or use uh, parchment paper for baking. Um, oh, good alternatives to dryer sheets are those um, wool dryer balls. Um, wow, there's a lot of questions. Um, let's see. You can skip around. Okay. We won't get through uh, all of them. Let's but see. people can go to your Facebook page and ask too. So if we don't get through them tonight, they can ask on your Facebook page. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so cast iron pans are great. Um, yes, like lodge pans, those are wonderful, completely inert. You even get a little iron from those. That's wonderful. Gas stoves, yes. There's been a ton of articles on gas stoves and they do emit uh, uh, CO2. So they don't completely burn clean. And that's why some of that, um, that gas can build up in the home. And we're going through this mass switch over to electric now in many ways. Okay, a replacement for Ziploc bags would be silicone. They make those that actually zip up. Um, but I use that waxed cloth for almost everything myself. Um, the best wood cutting boards, I use pressed paper. It's called Epicurean. They work great, and I run them through the dishwasher all the time. Um, and is there 100% cotton fleece? There's 100% cotton clothing, but generally when you see the word fleece, it means plastic. Um, impact on house pets. Yeah, all of these things affect house pets. In fact, um, I went to a client's home and she had her cats on several medications and there were visible dust bunnies everywhere. So once she got that all cleaned up, her cats did not have the wheeziness and the inflammation in their lugs anymore. Um, okay, so there's a question about diffusers and essential oils. Um, it's a better idea just to make a really dilute spray. So like a tablespoon of essential oil and a couple of cups of water and spray that around than using a diffuser. A diffuser is a little bit too much and it really builds up on curtains and things. And here's a mention of the EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group, the EWG.org. They're fantastic. You can go there and look at uh, specific cosmetics. You can look up ingredients there. Um, and yeah, check out sunscreens. It's a great resource. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Okay, and exercise clothes. I will post for you on social media about that on Facebook, on my Daniela Chase Facebook account. Um, oh gosh, this whole thing about baby food. So lead in baby food. Um, yeah, 
buying organic is important, but it's also really easy to make baby food and freeze it ahead of time. So there's some fantastic books on that. And I highly recommend that because they don't test often enough with any baby food, even the organic. Uh, Swiffers, not, uh, this is a question about whether Swiffering is safe. And of course the, um, the chemicals that are used in those cloths that get wrapped onto the, um, are just full of VOCs. So they're very high fragranced. Um, yeah, Dr. Bronner's toothpaste is a great one. Um, buying glass, all glass is inert and fine. I just like um, Duralex because uh, it's it's um, really hardy. Like you can put it in the freezer, you can put it in the oven and it won't break. So that's a good one. Uh, question on fluoride and toothpaste. So fluoride is not my favorite thing. Um, fluoride is used in so many things like dental floss and toothpaste and mouthwashes. And it's also put in our water and Fluoride does work to harden up the, uh, our teeth, but it doesn't just isolate our teeth. It, it also affects minerals in other places in our body, and it can harden the pituitary and affect our cognitive function, affect our kidneys. So it's better to avoid that one. Um, let's see. There are so many questions. Uh, how many more minutes do I have? Um, we have four minutes, so maybe two more. Okay, and then if I can uh, access these, I can answer all of these on social media. Um, and no, glass does not generally contain heavy metals, only if uh, that is colored glass and it's made someplace like in Mexico, then it might have lead in it. Um, but clear glass made in the US does not contain heavy metals. Um, and yes, and when your basement or your garage is attached to your home by a door, any kind of fumes in there are going to make their way into the house. So it's really important then to consider that just part of the interior of the house and get that cleaned up. Uh, you may want to have a uh, air purifier just going in that room all the time. Uh, and then what kinds of pans for cooking? Okay, so we talked about that a bit about cast iron, stainless steel, glass is great, um, and the green pan company. And uh, these are amazing and wonderful questions, and I really would like to answer those. So um, I will I will be sure to post about all of those. And if you don't get an answer from me that way through um, Facebook, I posted my email address there. And please feel free to reach out to me, and I'll be happy to get back to you. Wow, you flew through those questions. So thank <laughs> you for answering as many as you could before our program was over tonight. Um, right. Well, thank you so much for all of the information and insight on this topic that you've spent a lot of time on. Um, her book is out now and available. We have a link in the chat if you'd like to purchase your copy of Home Detox. It's definitely the kind of manual you'd want to keep in your house at all times. Um, Daniela Chase, thank you so much for your time tonight. And Hudson Library community, thank you guys all so much for tuning in tonight. Check out Daniela's Instagram and Facebook accounts if you want to contact her with more questions. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.